Harbol Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to your lotus feet. Thank you so much for gracing this association. Uh, Maharaj, today we are going to proceed from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto number six, chapter number one, verse number 48. And whenever you're ready, you may take the call over. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, you're muted. We can't hear you. I should mention one thing just before we start. I have a very unstable internet here. Okay. And it may jump off at one point or another. If it does, it'll take me just a minute to get back on. So that may happen. Okay. It's just the way it is. The internet here is not so good. So... Okay, begin. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavatam, <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 1, Text 48. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Manasyaivam Puram Devam Purarupam Pipasyati. Anumimam Sate Purvam Manasam Bhagavan Ajaha. Translation. The all-powerful, omnipotent Yamaraj is as good as Lord Brahma. But while situated in his own abode or in everyone's heart like Paramatma, he mentally observes the past activities of a living entity and thus understands how the living entity will act in future lives. Hmm. One should not consider Yamaraj an ordinary living being. He is as good as Lord Brahma. He has the complete cooperation of the Supreme Lord, who is situated in everyone's heart, and therefore, by the grace of the super soul, he can see the past, present, and future of a living being from within. The word anu mimam sate means that he can decide in consultation with the super soul. Anu means following. The actual decisions concerning the next lives of the living entities are made by the super soul. They are carried out by the Yamaraj. In the Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya, Chaksun Militam Yenatas May Shri Gurudeva Maha, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavari Paschat Yade Satarine, Vanchakalpa Turu Vishakripa Sindhu Pei Vachapatitana, Padane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadahar Srivasavi Gaur Bhakti Vinu, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Karma Daivanatrena is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the seventh canto. A living entity in the material world takes his next birth according to his activities and desires in his previous life. And therefore, it is a great organized facility that is arranged by the Lord for this to happen. And here we can see one of the key players in this, and that is Yamaraj. Sometimes he is known as the Lord of Death, or he's also known as Dhammaraj, who is the king of all religious principles. He is a great devotee of the Lord, 
Although he's in the category of a demigod, he has such facilities that he is as good as it says here as Lord Brahma. He is also as good as Lord Shiva. As it mentions that the super soul situ situated in the heart of all living entities is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his localized feature. Therefore, he sees everything. He knows past, present, and future. He is the Supreme Lord. But he sit, sits in the heart of all living entity as a directing feature of the Lord's mercy to push the, the conditioned soul towards him or towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, he, um, he supervises everything that goes on with the living entities. Now, one of the facilities that the Lord arranges is that when the person performs activities, they are under the influence of a particular mode of material nature. This is called triguna, three gunas, goodness, passion, and ignorance. All of this is arranged by the Supreme Lord through his material energy in order to facilitate the reactions of the living entity's actions in the material world, which brings about a particular result and a particular destination based on that result. The combination of one's life's activities plus one's previous inclinations towards these same activities culminates at the death at the time of the living entities departing the body. And Yamaraj, as it says here, in complete cooperation, who is situated along with the Supreme Lord, knows everything past, present, and future. And there is a decision made where the living entity will go in his next life. Before that decision is made, then depending on the, the activities of the living entity, in other words, anyone in the material world or anyone under the influence of the material energy gets reactions and those actions have consequences. The consequences is a person will be sinful, a person will be uh, very greedy, or a person will be somewhat pious. All of those activities are conducted by Yamaraj to give the living entities punishment. And so we see that there is a there is a what he called the hellish planets. Uh, you, I think we just passed that section in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the end of the fifth canto, how all of these uh, different living entities get reactions according to their activities. And then that after they get free from their reactions of their sinful activities by having to suffer accordingly, and then they're placed into the womb of another mother and they begin their sojourn again in this material energy trying to enjoy this material energy. So this goes on life after life for the materialists. <laughs> and so this is, so the God, make, so, so the Supreme Personality of God, it makes a very nice arrangement to facilitate everything. Just like you see, when there is, when there are things that are going on nice, there is organization. You see how organization is there in everything. <laughs> in um, in uh, institutions, in localized people's lives, they organize their life in a certain way. So organization is a feature of direction that facilitates a particular desired result. The Lord has a very complex organization here, and you see Yamaraj plays a very big part in that organization. So he's quite powerful. There's another living entity who is also on the same level as Yamaraj and the Super Soul, and that is Lord Shiva. He's also called the father of all living entities. He also sits in the heart, or he knows past, present, and future of all the living entities also. He is also quite powerful. So all of these great personalities assist the Lord 
in giving the conditioned living entities the results of their activities in the material world. And therefore, one has to suffer or enjoy according to their activities. If one acts in the mode of ignorance, which is the mode of destruction, great sinful activities, uh, excessive amount of uh, intoxication, madness, sleep, and just a, a greediness, then one will get a body accordingly. They may not even get a human form of life. One acts in passion, great desire to enjoy this material world, even if it's done in a very organized and very materially accepted way, it's still in the mode of passion. And therefore, the results are one will get a body accordingly. And if one acts in the mode of goodness, which is the activities of piety, civility, morality, aesthetic values, you might say materially good qualities, um, such as religiousness, knowledge, uh, uh, charity. These are all qualities of the mode of goodness, proper charity, that is. Um, then one will get a body accordingly. Now, for a devotee, devotee doesn't see Yamaraj. We will see as the uh, verses continue to go on as you go into the second and third chapters, especially the third chapter. You'll see how um, there is a discussion about the destination of uh, Ajamil and how those who are under the influence of the spiritual energy the up the para prakriti or the daivi prakriti do not have to face yamaraj they are directly connected with the super soul and their uh, destination is always uh, some aspect of good birth or ultimately no birth and back home back to the spiritual world so um, although yamaraj is a devotee the devotees don't get the chance to meet Yamaraj because he has to deal with those who are sinful. And everyone in the material world is sinful, <laughs> whether they're in the mode of goodness, passion, or ignorance, because that sinful activity keeps the activities in these modes keep one in the material world. As Srila Prabhupada would say, pious or impious, it's all impious. Why? Because it's material. What does that mean? That even those who are very charitably disposed, nicely placed in the material world, because they haven't taken up devotional service, they are acting for their own selfish interests, and therefore the material energy will also give them a reaction accordingly. Although may, they may get a nice material situation, still, as Srila Prabhupada emphasized, they still have to suffer birth, death, disease, old age, and other calamities that come by way of having a material body. So one has to take the devotional service and then one can be free from Yamaraj <laughs> and the reactions of material activities. So devotional service is a karma. There are three categories of activities, karma, the karma and a karma. This is nicely described in the third chapter, or maybe perhaps maybe fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, where karma means pious activities, the karma means sinful activities, and a karma means devotional service. So a devotee will perform activities for the pleasure of the Lord or under the guidance of the spiritual master. And those activities don't have a material result, although it appears they do in the sense that there is no material reactions for devotional service. The reactions are simply the manifestations of the activity that either elevate one, that elevate one towards Krishna. In other words, 
uh, akarma activities or devotional activities are free from material reactions and connect one more with the Supreme Personality in devotional service. Even if it's mixed devotion, still it is free from the reactions of the material energy. So one has to uh, engage in devotional service. Otherwise, one is the stringent laws of material nature are very, very difficult, in fact, impossible to overcome. And material energy can be very, very strong in punishing the living entity. We have heard and we have discussed it in very great detail, the 27, 28 hells, 26 hells, I think it is, that was mentioned at the end of the fifth canto. And you can see how, how much the living entity has to suffer for the reactions of their sinful activities. And people are unaware of this, but they're suffering already by performing the activities, and then there's more suffering waiting for them at the time of death. So therefore, one has to very carefully we execute devotional service under the guidance of one's spiritual master, and they can be free from the influence or the jurisdiction of Yamaraj. Although Yamaraj is a devotee of the Lord, still he has a very, what we say, um, difficult service. He has to punish the living entities by giving them a a material body that is suitable for the punishment that they are destined to receive. And after they go through that, then they're again placed into the womb of another mother, and then they begin their sojourn. So Maya the Vasse Kacho Bese Kacho Habu Dubai Jeev Krishna Das E Vishwash Kodina Dukana. We are not meant to take birth in this material world. We are not meant to undergo the transformations that come by way of material energy. We are pure spiritual energies. We are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. We do not touch the material energy, but because we have a material body, under the influence of the material body, we have to undergo happiness and distress in the activities that are performed based on the material body. But one who takes the devotional service ultimately is, is situated properly in their constitutional position as, their, as, a, as the servant of the Lord in devotion, which is our nature. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhu Kabunai Sravanadi Siddhi Chitte in the hearts of all living entities, the living, the living entity has pure love for Krishna, which can never be lost and can never be, uh, what we say, yeah, can never be lost and can never be, uh, what we say, changed either. It is pure love for Krishna. It can be covered, and that covering is simply the state of a dream, just like when you go to dream, sleep at night, you're dreaming you're somebody else, or you're dreaming that you are in a different atmosphere. But all of this is considered to be a dream state. And therefore, we don't give much credit to that, because actually, it's simply the creation of the mind, that's all. And similarly, the mind has also created this material tabernacle by which we interact on this level here and we think oh i'm a man i'm a woman i'm i have this is my relationship with these persons and therefore i belong to this particular nation i have a particular set of characteristics and all of these are simply the external manifestations of the material energy it has nothing to do with the soul and therefore, one should understand that devotional service is the only option that the living entity can take to. One who does not take the devotional service will simply have to suffer. That's all. There's no um, alternative because that is our nature, that is our birthright, that is our, what we say, innate qualities. And, but somehow we've come to this material world. We don't know how we got here. 
and when people would ask Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, how did, how did, if we are pure and spiritual energy situated with Krishna in the material world, how did we come to this place? And Prabhupada say, well, if you spend so much time trying to figure out how you got here, but it's better to sp figure out how you, how, you, how you can get out of here. This is more important. He used the example of a drowning man who is drowning, and a boat comes along to save the man, and he wants to save him, but the man says, before you save me, tell me how I, how I got here in this drowning condition. And that will simply divert one's attention to the solution, away from the solution. And therefore, one should just simply figure out how to get back. And then Prabhupada says, once you get back to the spiritual world, as Krishna mentions in the Bhagavad Gita, um, one does not again take birth in this material world, which is simply miserable. One will again attain their pure state of consciousness in, with Krishna in the spiritual world, where life is eternal, full of knowledge and unlimited joy in unlimited series of varieties of expressions. Now this is uh, this is our nature, but somehow or other we come here. We want to avoid uh, being captured by Yamaraj and uh, somehow uh, put under his jurisdiction. Although he's a nice guy, <laughs> he he is a devotee himself. He when he he took birth, there's a story how uh, one sadhu uh, was. Uh, was uh, arrested um, by uh, by one king, and um, the sadhu was understanding why he he got arrested, and then he was uh, he uh, was sentenced to very horrible form of torture which leads to death it's called shul they take a very sharp iron rod and through the anus one is placed on the iron rod and pushed down and one the the, the rod goes right into one's body all the way through one's head very full and so this sage was sentenced and and so, but then it was an understood by the king that the king, that the sage did not commit any mistake, so he should not be punished. So the sage was thinking, why was I situated? Why was I subjected to this harassment? And then he consulted with Yamaraj. He had that power. And Yamaraj revealed to him that when you were a little boy, you were playing with an ant and you took a straw and you in the in the back part of the ant you punctured the ant and it caused the ant to die so you had to go through this so the sage said well that's not fair i was just a little child and you're saying you subjected me to such a horrible form of punishment Therefore, I curse you to take birth in the material world. So Yamaraj was cursed by this sage to take birth in the material world, and he appeared in the uh, pastimes of Lord Krishna as Vidura, the younger brother of Dhritarashtra. And as Vidura, he got to preach Krishna consciousness. And this is interesting because Yamaraj, in that particular uh, situation actually desired that he was thinking all i do is i have to take the living entities and judge their uh, circumstances in the material world uh, to, uh, arrange to take them to a place for punishment go through the punishment through my agencies and then give them another body he wanted something different so the lord arranged for him to get cursed so he could take birth in the material world as vidura and preach krishna consciousness and he was of course a, such a very great personality he actually met um, 
uh, Maitreya Rish, who was a pure devotee of the Lord, and many of the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam discusses uh, the, the discussion between Vidura and Maitreya, along with him saving his brother uh, uh, Vidarastra from uh, uh, sinful life and bringing him to the point of get, uh, achieving liberation. So this is Yamaraj, very interesting personality, uh, powerful as the super soul, consults with the super soul, and uh, also a very great devotee of the Lord. But still, he has a very difficult job, just like Prabhupada used to say with Maya. Maya is our friend. We don't have any problem with Maya, but because there are demons, she has to do her service, and therefore the, the world is undergoing much difficulty because of the presence of demons, because Maya has to serve the demons by facil facilitating their desires to enjoy in this material world. So um, if we study this very carefully, read Srimad Bhagavatam, we'll see there's a, a, a very complex network that makes up the activities of the living entity in the material world and the arrangements that are made to elevate or to um, push down the living entities according to the activities. But Krishna consciousness is there and uh, therefore one should take to Krishna consciousness and free themselves from all of these complications which ultimately lead to suffering in this material world. So this is the only solution. There is no second solution. Um, simply adjusting the material energy will never bring about any kind of permanent happiness. It gives one some temporary relief from suffering but does not bring one to the state of happiness. So therefore, all the attempts in this material world are simply trying to adjust the material energy so people can free themselves from suffering. It will never happen because the material energy doesn't work according to a people's adjustments. It works according to the plan of the Supreme Lord. And we can see here, here is part of the plan of the Supreme Lord. When a living entity needs to get judged, there's a consultation between the super soul that situates in the heart of that living entity and Yamaraj at the time of death. And then he's giving his next destination accordingly. So, and the more sinful a person is, the more they have to suffer before they achieve their next body. If a, if a person is a pure devotee of the Lord, when they die, they immediately, instantaneously, not even, there is not even a measurement of time. Simultaneously, they leave the body and simultaneously they are back in the spiritual world. Sometimes it's compared to the flash of a lightning. It's that fast or even faster. But take it down, the more sinful a person is, or the less pious a person is, the longer they have to wait for their next destination. So for a devotee, Yamaraj is a friend, but we don't want to meet him. <laughs> we offer him all respects. <laughs> he has a very difficult service. He loves the devotees because he is a devotee himself. But he, uh, and you'll see how he instructs his, his assistants, the Yamadudas, when they try to take the soul of uh, they take the soul of uh, Ajamil and bring it to Yamaraj, and they were foiled by the Vishnu Dudas, and that will come up with them. Okay, so we'll stop here. Any questions? Comments? Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for your kind assistance. I always wait for this day to associate with you, to hear the wonderful stories that you tell us. 
Thank you sharing again that the bottom line is always the devotional service and there is no other way out. Thank you, Maharaj. It was so wonderful. Um, I see one comment already. It is from um, Jyoti Madhaji. She's saying, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus foot. Feet, Guru Maharaji. So, um, devotees, if you have any questions, please go ahead, unmute yourself, and you can ask Maharaj directly. It will be great if you could also please um, put your cameras on so Maharaj can see you. It will be great to associate with all of you, please. Then what Pranam, Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj, as usual, you are servant. Prahlad and Das from Las Vegas. <laughs> Please accept my Hari, Hari. Maharaj, this is an excellent you know, encouragement you give it to devotees like us, you know, who have bad past karmas. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhakti process itself is so, so, so much pure, purifying that even uh, someone speaks of Lord Ram's name, Lord uh, Krishna's name, or any other Vishnu name, even once, he can mm -hmm. bypass dialogue with uh, with uh, with Yamaraj. As, as in uh, Bhaj um, Govindam, it says, you know, Bhagavad Gita, Kinchid Gita, Ganga, Ganga Jal Kani Kapita, Sakrudapi Murari Samarcha Kriyatam Yamena Charcha. You know, you bypass dialogue with Yamaraj if you want to say it once. And sometimes I wonder, you know, in US we have these trucks. Uh, ram they call it but it is written r-a-m at the back of the truck and i wonder you know people those who read this maybe they pronounce it some other way but it is still name of lord ram so they must be getting some benefit out of this so yeah <laughs> so it's i just wonder, was wondering called, what is your opinion on that it's called gyata sukriti that's right. unknowingly getting is getting some mercy yeah, yeah. Yeah, that the name of the Lord, or even the form of the Lord, wherever it's seen, can bring about auspiciousness. That's right. Yeah. So that was I was, you know, thinking that they are so fortunate. Maybe they have a Prithi or whatever. They read the name of Lord Krishna while driving on a freeway. <laughs> so that's how it is. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak, my life. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Hare Krishna, Dhanvad Pranam Guru Maharaj Ji. My question is, uh, in Bhagavad Gita, uh, from as by understanding of Bhagavad Gita, uh, that the mind is, um, from means the root of mind is, it is made by Tamoguna and uh, Rajoguna. Means it will not extend uh, from Rajoguna to Satoguna. We have to um, do um, our endeavor. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not able to hear. Uh, you're going to have to speak a little bit slower for me to really understand what you're saying. It's, my, my reception on this area is very difficult, so I'll have to speak slow and clear. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you, but when you start speaking, it all gets muffled. So I can't distinguish the words. <laughs> so just try to speak close, slowly and clearly. Now can you hear me? That's better, yeah. Okay. Uh, my question is, uh, the mind is made of Rajaguna and Tamoguna. We cannot extend our mind. Uh, means by its nature, it's tam Rajaguna. So we have to do our endeavor to make it Satoguna, right? Well, it says in the Shastras, uh, the, the false ego is in the mode of ignorance, the intelligence is in the mode of passion, and the mind is in the mode of goodness. That is the, that is the natural mind, the clear mind. But well, once it gets connected to the material energy, it becomes affected by it. And therefore, it exhibits the characteristics of the lower modes also. But the mind is generally in the mode of goodness. 
but in my case it's not so uh, uh, so what exactly is is the mind of pure devotee do they re- uh, spiritualize their sato uh, their tamoguna and rajoguna or they are they are able to uh, make their mind completely satoguna means they are able to do that or they spiritualize uh, rajoguna how is it means what exactly happens with pure devotee pure devotee is not in any of the gunas is sattva gun or sudha sattva sudha sattva means transcendental even to the mode of goodness so the pure devotee is engaged in devotional service sagunan savatitai tam brahma buya yakapate they are on the transcendental platform they may exhibit qualities of the mode of goodness but it is sudha sattva not just goodness it's pure goodness so their minds are connected with krishna in devotion so it will take many lives to be a pure devotee uh prabhupad said you can do it in one life depends how 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 determined you are it depends on your determination and your your association so if you take uh, take up saintly association and you and you serve in that atmosphere you will you can make fast progress back because in this particular age chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy is very strong therefore through the chanting of the hari krishna maha mantra and through association and service to the devotees especially the spiritual master one can purify themselves from all material uh contamination and come to the level of sudha sattva or pure goodness okay guru maharaj ji but i am not a full devotee right so even if i determine will it be counted for the mercy of chaitanya mahaprabhu if you do what <laughs> i mean i am not a full devotee means i am not ta- taking that much pain or the end of a that a full devotee does in the ashram i mean the brahmachari ashram so will will a little determination whatever i could do will he, will i be get the mercy of chaitanya mahaprabhu it will says, be it says it says grihai takho bane takho sabda hari bole takho whether you're in grihastha ashram brahmachari sanyas whatever ashram you are there's no there everyone has to follow the process of devotional service the ashrams are places of spiritual cultivation every anyone can become krishna conscious in any of the four ashrams but you have to follow according to your ashram that's all there are rules and regulations that are that are different from each of the ashrams but the process of of hearing and chanting the glories of the lord is the same and that is the process of purification so how you apply your your time and energy is according to your ashram that's all but anyone uh, can become krishna conscious if you read the shrimad bhagavatam uh, the um, third canto uh, what is it 31st chapter i think verse number 7 3317 you want to turn to that nina see if you can find that verse 3317 this is avan maharaj yes not able to hear Hare Krishna Maharaj is frozen because then I think it is stalling. Yes. I think that uh let's try maybe the 330 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Go to another verse, Nina. Okay. In the, verse yes. six. Try verse six or eight. I'm not sure. One or the, it's one of those verses. In the Ji. This is yeah. eight. No. I like we go back to six. B31. Is this the last chapter in the third canto? This uh, I don't recognize this verse. 331. 33 is the last chapter, Mara. Oh, 30. Okay. I'm sorry. Verse 33. Yeah. Okay. 331. 333. Uh, keep going. Okay. There you go. Verse number seven. There it is. Oho Bhattisva Pato Tari Gam Yajiva Gavatu Namatu Bhyam Tepastevaste Jiva Sanyar Aryam Brahmachur Namadvinati Ate. Translation. How glorious are those whose tongues are chanting your holy name. Even if born in the family of dog eaters, such persons are worshipful. Persons who chant the holy name of your Lord must have executed all kinds of austerities and fire sacrifices and achieved all the good manners of the Aryans. To be chanting the holy name of your Lord, they must have bathed in all the holy places, studied the Vedas, and fulfilled everything required. And the whole purport is about the glories of chanting the holy name. Therefore, any person who takes up this chanting of the holy name, it says, has passed all the lower stages and, and therefore is, is on the highest stage of bhakti, simply the one who. If one chants only once, it's understood he has pa already passed all the examinations, not to speak of those that are chanting always 24 hours a day. It is... It is, especially said, to be young, only unto you, one must chant God's name. So here it says, it gets it, even if one is has a low birth, they can achieve this. And there's another verse from the second canto, Kirata Hunam Palinda Pukasa, Ambira Samba, two, I can't remember the exact, uh, um, situation here. Okay, we are again. Can you hear me? Yes, Mara. Yes, Mara. Yes. Yeah, I've lost yes, the. I've lo I, I lost the video for some reason. My thing is jumping around here again. Can you see it more about? Two, three, uh, no, I don't know. Something went wrong with my video here. Oh, let me see. Okay, now I'm getting closer again. That's it. Yeah, read that verse. Kiratu hunam polinda pukasa. Maharaj, can you see the translation? Or should I read it? Yeah. Kareta Hunan Andra Pulinga Pukasa Mbira Sambaya, members of the even others addicted to sin sinful activities can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord due to his being the supreme personality, supreme power. I beg to offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Now these are lower races around the world that are mentioned. So devotional service is available for anyone and everyone. It's just a matter of applying yourself to the process with determination, enthusiasm. Hmm. 
We have Gajendra the elephant achieved perfection, and he was an elephant. You have, uh, what's the other one? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took two dogs back to Godhead. Two, not just one. So we have examples, even living entities and lower species of life have attained perfection by the mercy of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Guru Maharaj Ji. Thank you so much. Please accept my humble obeisances. I'm not humble, <laughs> respectful obeisances. Thank you so much. Yeah, just, just keep following, the, just keep chatting and serving the devotees and everything will come. <laughs> Ji, Prabhu, Ji, Guru Maharaj Ji. Thank you, Maharaj. We have a... A nice little comment here. It says, um, Hare Krishna Maharaj. It's from Amrita Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much for the wonderful session. Your lessons are so easy to understand, and I cannot agree more. It's, it's so wonderful, Maharaj, your lessons. And um, I see a hand of uh, Jyoti Mataji. Would you like to go ahead and unmute yourself? And your question I'm done, Mataji. I'm done. Oh. I'm grateful to you also. Okay. okay. Thank and you. any, thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much for your wonderful questions. You actually asked the question on behalf of all of us. Uh, none. I. My mind is also not sattvic. It is always getting disconnected and going away during chanting. So, Mataji, we all. It's all so because of your association only. <laughs> I am just trying to understand a bit. That's it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mataji, for your association. Devotees, go ahead and pose your questions if you have any. Pooja Mataji, would you like to go ahead? You can unmute yourself. Hare Krishna Maharaj and Bhaktaranam. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I, uh, please uh, allow me to recite only two, three lines of the Modar Ashtakam among you. <laughs> Go ahead. Ishwaram Sachidanan Lasat Kundalam Gokule Brajimana Yashoda Bhiyolok Ladhavamana भक्ति Swagosha Nima Jantam Tadiye Shita Geishu Bhaktir Jitava Punam Prima Tat Sachata Vritivan Deva Mokshana. Thank you. Very nice. Hare Krishna Maharaj. We are preparing us for the advent of Kartik, which will come up in about two months. We will be, we'll be doing that regularly in all our temples, homes, and worshipful places all around the world, honoring the Lord in his Damodar feature, very sweet, playful, childlike mood of Krishna as he performs his activities in the Sri Vrindavan Dham. Thank you, Maharaj. I have um, 
a, a little comment from Vani Shri Mataji. She's writing, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. It's a fortunate moment that we are able to interact and hear your divine words. So true. Please keep us in your prayers and bless us so that we can sustain and progress and on this platform of Krishna Bhakti. How wonderful. And uh, Brinda Gopika Mataji, she has written, Hare Krishna, um, His Holiness Chandramoli uh, Maharaj, Ananta Ananta Koti Dandavat Pranam, please accept Hare our Krishna. humble obeisances behalf, on behalf of uh, all Vaishnavas. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Sorry, was there anybody trying to ask a question? Uh, uh, Mataji, I just want to. Uh, speak a, a slok <laughs> with Maharaj just uh, you know refer to that 3.33.7 the 3.33.6 is also another diamond slok about you know a bhakti process <laughs> he says jan naam deya sravana anu kirtana adya trahuna adya smarana api kvachit swado api sadya savana kalpate kuta punasti bhagavan to darsana so that is also a, a great which, which says that you know to say nothing of the spiritual advancement of persons who see the supreme person face to face, even a person born in a family of dog eaters immediately becomes eligible to perform Vedic sacrifices if he once utters the holy name of the supreme person at your Godhead or chants about him, hears about his pastimes, offers him obeisances, or even remembers him. So such a, such a great, <laughs> such a great uh, advantage of even remembering Lord Krishna, what to speak of, uh, speaking his name. All this glorification of, uh, you know, holy name is so exalted that, you know, we get so much solace uh, because we do all these things uh, so routinely as, as devotees. <laughs> so this was another slok which reminded me. Uh, from this, is, this is the feature of the Lord's mercy, and especially in this age of Kali. Right. <laughs> so exalted. But there were so many difficulties. Yeah. The benefits are great. That's why when it comes down to a they discussion, the great sages had a discussion and they were just try to decide which era of the human existence is the most merciful. Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Kapura Yuga, and Kali Yuga. And after great discussions, they couldn't come to any conclusion. Finally, they all got together and went to see uh, uh, Vyasadeva in Adibhadri. And uh, they approached Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva gave the understanding that Kali Yuga is the best of all ages because of the presence of the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Although people in previous ages knew about the chanting, the chanting was not the Yuga Dharma, and people could get benefit from chanting, but they had to perform the Yuga Dharma according to the age. In this age, the Yuga Dharma is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra. But therefore, in this age, simply by chanting Hare Krishna, and one should take it seriously. It's not shouldn't shouldn't be done routinely or just whimsically or whenever it's convenient. It should be done in, in a regulated way with the maximum amount of attention and devotion. And then one, even if one chants once purely, then one can... Yeah, Maharaj, uh, I think your internet is stalling a little bit and we are not able to hear you. By themselves from all sinful reactions that have been committed for many good life. So this can I do? Yeah, it looks like he got disconnected. Maharaj got disconnected. Yes. Oh, he's here. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Maharaj, Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Waiting for you to come to Charlotte. <laughs> Just a week away. Yes. And I'll get some nice prasadam when I get there. I hope so. Jai <laughs> <laughs> Ho. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So you'll be in Charlotte in a week, and then are you, will you be at Gita Nagari anytime soon? I just left Gita Nagari a couple of days ago. Oh. There was a big, <laughs> a huge festival. Yeah. It was Yatra on Saturday. I know. I missed it this year. Yeah, there were many amazing devotees there. But there was about 122 young people who came from all over the world to be there for that weekend. And it was quite a powerful packed weekend. Uh, constant seminars, kirtans, and programs, everything highlighted with the Rathiyatra on Saturday. And then, uh, yeah, so yeah, I was fortunate enough to have a chance to be there. And where else will you be in, in the U.S.? Where else are you going? Well, tomorrow I fly to Chicago for the Chicago Rathiyatra. We'll come to Chicago, the Chicago Rathiyatra is Saturday. Sunday I'll be in Naperville, which is the... Um, temple in the suburbs in the Chicago area for the mm -hmm. Sunday program starting at 4.30 and then uh, Monday and Tuesday in Chicago and I think Wednesday I fly to Charlotte. How long will you be in Charlotte? Thursday is Balaram's appearance day and there'll be initiation uh, on on that day, on the 11th, I think it's the 11th, and then the 12th, 13th, I'll be there, 14th, and we leave, we leave uh, Charlotte to return to Chicago for one day, and then on the 16th, I fly to Europe. So that's my schedule. And there will be programs in Charlotte, so I'm not sure what the Charlotteites have arranged, but you can check with Shamagori and mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. Maharaj, I'll come to so meet much. with you on Sunday in Naperville. Mm -hmm. I'll come to take your blessings. I'm so happy you're going to be here. Oh, you're you're in Chicago area? Uh, yes, Maharaj. I live in Naperville, very close to the temple. So I'll definitely come to take your blessing. Oh, it's good. Yeah, the temple is growing and they're building a new yes. temple. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And we'll see if I can uh, go to Chicago. It's not that far for the Rath Yatra. That's on the 6th. And I think it's... Uh, I'm not sure of the time. Not today. But yes. It starts somewhere it. late morning in the, on the sixth. Yeah, it'll be great to meet you, Maharaj. Yeah, Thank please you. come. Of course, I would definitely on Sunday for sure. <laughs> I'll be there at four four o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I think the program starts with kirtan at four. Yes, and, four thirty. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, um, that's my schedule. <laughs> At least there's a few fill-ins that will take place, but that's the general schedule. Sri Devi Mataji, do you have a question for Maharaj? Please go ahead. 
Thank you, Nina. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, on the subject of Yamaraj and Yamadutas and near-death uh, experiences, many times I have read and heard of people, Christians, of the Christian faith, who have had near-death experiences, and they talk of seeing a very bright light. They talk of the light leading them through a tunnel. Then they talk of uh the light uh, taking them to a higher realm where there are angels very bright beings sometimes they've even seen jesus christ and so on we never hear them saying i saw the yamadutas i saw some horrific creatures so how uh, how is this that the christians who are meat eaters and sometimes doing all kinds of sinful things they have all these beautiful experiences at uh, the near death uh, i mean they at least say that why do you say they're sinful? How do you know? Well, meat eating is considered a sinful activity. So Jesus forgives them for that. I'm not God, so I can't answer your question. You know? <laughs> so... <laughs> right, right. Obviously, according to one's devotion, they get they get connected with different realms of existence. But who says that that's the spiritual world? That light, that bright light, could just be that could be just a leading to the higher planets. That's all. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. We don't know what it is, but obviously it's something better than what they... People see different personalities depending on their level of... Uh, Thank you. Oh, you know, development. Near death experiences are also, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that near death experiences are also sometimes an indication that this is your destiny, but you're not qualified to reach it yet. So they go back to their particular situation, get enlightened by that near-death experience, and then change their life towards more in the devotional practice. It's, it's a little special mercy on the sinful. So they get a little, here's what's waiting for you if you become more Krishna conscious. Yes, Guru Maharaj, this is so absolutely correct because I was just listening to a near-death experience of a very, um, very special personality and he was a strict Hindu and uh, he talks of how, but he had not practiced properly and he had a near-death experience and then he went and he saw Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ told him what to do and what not to do. And then he kept begging forgiveness from Jesus Christ. And it was very obvious that if he continues to sin, he'll go down a different way. And if he does what Jesus Christ asked him to do, he will actually enter into the heavenly realm. So that was yeah. very clear That's... that conversation. Maharaj, we cannot hear you. Yeah. So telling you the same thing. Hurry, hurry. 
Hare Krishna, can you hear me again? Okay. Now you're back, Prabhu. Yes. Yeah. I have my this my internet is on is on a time screen. Yeah. It goes on for a while, it runs out of energy and then it drops <laughs> off when it comes back. So what I said to Sri Devi is the spiritual master is also telling you the same thing. You don't have to go through a near-death experience. Just follow what the spiritual master says. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. Your mercy is amazing. Thank you. We have some comments in the comments area where Nikita Mataji is writing. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam, Guru Maharaj Ji, please give me your blessings. I have started a new job where I'm taking care of a very religious couple from India. I'm trying to bring them into Krishna consciousness. They have a beautiful temple with Laddu Gopal and Radha Krishna. I told them, whenever they thank me i i told them whenever they thank me for something to instead to say radha krishna and please bless me that i can bring the whole family in krishna consciousness um dandavat pranam to your lotus feet i seek your blessings from shivan and then <clears throat> And then we have a wonderful comment from Nilambari Mataji. She says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I was in Gita Nagari. I was overwhelmed seeing you dancing and singing continuously. Amazing energy. Hari Bol. <laughs> that, was, that was only due to the association I had. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances on the Sushila Prabhupada. We saw the same thing in Toronto, Maharaj. Like Madhav Prabhu has the devotion to sing continuously, uh, keep everyone else absorbed, and uh, we witnessed you dancing in devotion three days continuously. Thank you, Maharaj. Well, our, pro our process is to chant, dance, and take prasad. <laughs> Amy Gupta Mataji writes, thank you, Maharaj, for your beautiful class and constant encouragement to continue in the path of devotion, determination, with enthusiasm. Dandavat Pranam. Thank you. Okay, should we uh, end here? Yes, Maharaj, um, we will go ahead and uh, take your questions, Maharaj, to end the class. There's one question, Maharaj. Can yes, I ask one question to Sukhakar Krishna Das? Can I ask one question, Guru Maharaj? This oh, yeah. Sukhakar Krishna Das. Okay, I'm go ahead. actually in Govardhan Eco Village, but I just heard your lecture in the end. I got one question. Uh, Maharaj, uh, actually, uh, I heard uh, one devotee in Delhi. Uh, she is a devotee, uh, disciple of Japtak Maharaj, and she was 59 year old five years back and uh, um, she died and uh, she went to the Yamalok. And when she went to Yamalok, uh, the Yamadu told, took her near the Vaitharni River and they told that you jump, now you have to go to the other side. She said, I cannot go, I am Prabhupada's movement is gone, I am chanting 16 knots every day. But uh, Yamadu said, you have been brought, so you have to jump. So immediately when Mataji came with white dress and said, uh, Mataji, come, I want to talk to you. She took her on the side and told that why you have come to Vaitarni because you were chanting but you never took Sadhu Sangha. So that's why this is the punishment. But once you came to Chandini Chok, one of the Sadhu Sangha, no, I never come. No, you came. You came at 8 o'clock. At 8, 5, you slept. So whole class was sleeping. But since you have come once, I have come. 
she has who are you she said i my name is sadhu sanga mata ji then uh, she told that you go back i will take you back to your place and you will get one more chance now you do lot of sadhu sanga do lot of jeev there so she, when she came back her dead body was in the cremation ground just for going to cremation but because of crowd the body was kept but uh, at 9 o'clock uh, her legs started moving and her husband said my wife is again alive then they took her and they took one full interview she said yes i was taken to yamaloka and sadhu sanga mata ji brought me back now i want to go home and do sadhu sanga she is doing so many bhakti rickshaws and she is totally connected to sadhu sanga preaching so just i want to share this what i heard and they said they have got the recording of the mata ji with a press report also she is from delhi that is a north indian lady so i just want to share because today i heard from gauranga prabhu's class so i thought i will share with all of you thank you very much maharaj thank you very much you are such a wonderful disciple of shila prabhupad we need your constant blessings so that we also can get your dust maharaj please hari krishna you you heard this story from from gauranga yeah, yeah. today only i heard Oh, interesting. Okay, so this gave me some Amen. encouragement. See, we are trying to. Uh, my sangha is only with uh, this uh, chant uh, sangha group, so I am very happy. I would not leave this group wherever I am till I leave this world. I will be there, and I want to go back home, Maharaj. You are ready back. You are ready back home. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj, thank you. Hari Om Sri Maharaj. Thank you very much, Maharaj, and. Uh, You are a pure devotee, and we are all happy that Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. All of us will go back home with your blessings. Do you all agree with my comment? Uh, what I'm requesting for Maharaj? Do you all agree with me? If Maharaj blesses Haribol. us, we have no worry. Only th- yes, Hari Bol. Yeah, Hari Bol. Hari Bol, Radhe Radhe. Hari Bol, Hari Bol. I just have one request from Asha Mata Ji. She has been sending numerous messages to read this out to you, Maharaj. So, sorry about one little extra time. She says that Hari Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Whenever you speak, it's Sri La Prabhu Pada and Lord speaking through you, Maharaj. Yeah. For, so- for souls like us to get off the illusionary state. thinking ourselves to be the lords of material nature truth is that we are servants and we are trying to imitate the master so if you wanted to read this out to you maharaj thank you asha are you there she's i think she's not able to yes, speak maharaj, because maharaj, in- maharaj, there you go my yeah. internet is not so good yes maharaj my humble obeisances yeah. to you it maharaj asha send me uh, send me that uh, email you sent me already I I read it yesterday, but then I I somehow I misplaced it and I lost it on my computer. So send it again if you can. Hey, Maharaj, I cut the hair, which was an obstacle for me between. As you said, Maharaj, I just cut it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Okay, thank you very much, and we'll say goodbye and. See you all very soon again. Hopefully, see you soon, Maharaj. Thank you so I much. Can't wait. Wait. Can't thank you, thank you. So much, Maharaj. Thank you 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 so much, Maharaj. Thank